Hey, good evening. So this is going to be um, the start of a little series I want to do on the mysteries and really just understanding what is mystery, what is a mystery in the Bible, and um, knowing that the things that are hidden are being spoken openly. The hidden things, the hidden purpose of God, the things that were hidden are now being spoken openly. God has sent his son for sinners to die on a cross, bearing their sins in his own body, condemning sin in his own body. So that he might set free captives. And that anyone who believes on him would be born again into God's very own family. And become a son and an heir with Christ. It's fantastic. And in his death, he was victorious. He was victorious that he paid for sin. He paid for sin. For redemption through his blood. And now we can boldly approach God as a father. And we can know him because we know Jesus Christ is the son, his son. We know him because we know Jesus, the word. And we know that we've been born of God because we have the testimony. Jesus died for my sins. He rose from the dead in power. In the power of his incorruptible life from eternity to eternity. That's who he is. Incorruptible life. And he rose from the dead. So we we believe this. Um, we're sons of God. But it wasn't always that these hidden things, these mysteries, these secrets, they were hidden. And we see that in Romans 16.25. This is the one I wanted to start with. The, uh, the use of the word mystery, because I think it's so so beautiful to God's eternal purpose. God purposed in eternity to do a great work, a great thing, so that his glory, power, dominion, majesty would be known. And, he, and so that worship would be something of of unity in the truth, of fellowship in the reality of who he is, sharing in his life, sharing in his very divine nature, and rejoicing, not simply compelled to worship out of, uh, out of servitude, but a rejoicing and an enjoyment in God for who he is. And we come to know that by the gospel by knowing that Jesus paid for our sins. That's primary. Believing that Jesus paid for our sins. So Romans 16, 25. Now to him, and this is the closing of the letter of Romans, but I think it's so good the way that he frames this sentence. It's just wide in scope. So now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, how are you established? According to the gospel. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of the mystery. Which was kept secret since the world began. So the mystery was a secret. It was a secret.
But now it's revealed. But now it's revealed. The revelation of the mystery. What is the revelation of the mystery? The preaching of Jesus Christ. What is the preaching of, of Jesus Christ? The gospel. And what is the gospel? It is the power of God unto salvation. And if you just read it backwards, that's exactly that's exactly how it goes. The power of God unto salvation is the gospel, which is which is the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. It's so funny. Sometimes when you read scriptures backwards, they they say just just some powerful things. Um, and I see that in First John too, For, or First John the book, First John. You see a lot of stuff like that when you read even even verses backwards. It's it's astounding sometimes how you can pick up different pieces when you go backwards. It's very fun. Um, but now is made manifest. What's that? Manifest is just openly known. It's open. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Faith is obedience to the gospel. And that is what is commanded of all nations. To believe the gospel. And by hearing him who speaks, just like Hebrews says, Hearing him who speaks, see that you are not like the disobedient children who are hardened in their hearts and turned away from hearing. And the word that's spoken to us is the word of life, of reconciliation. Come near to God because he loves you and he sent Jesus to die for you. For God so loved the whole world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is according, it's according to the prophets and the scriptures. And now it's all made manifest. It's all openly shown. It's an open show now. He's triumphed in his work of death and resurrection. His obedience unto death. It's all out in the open now. It's all victory from here. The world may do whatever, but it's all victory for us. It's all victory. And this is where we stand. And this is where we rejoice. And we have a bold entrance into the kingdom. Because we're rejoicing in the victory of Jesus Christ. And thanking God for his truth, his promises, and his guarantee. His love, everything. He's just good. Okay, so what what you should walk away with, I know that I went on and on about um, just this passage because it's just, there's so much you can unpack from it and why not it's you know it's just goodness um but the mystery the under, understanding that the preaching of jesus christ which is the gospel the good news of salvation first to the jew and and then to the gentile that was a mystery in that the work was not completed if the, prince of, if, the, if the rulers of this world, if the princes and rulers of this world had known, had known what Jesus was doing, that this death would secure redemption and that his blood would pay the price for everyone, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. So it was hidden since the world began. Since the world began, there was a mystery. It was not known. It was hidden. And Paul, 
is the one who's given this apostleship to the Gentiles to open up these mysteries and speak them plainly, clearly, openly, and make manifest what the scriptures and the prophets speak according to the commandment of the everlasting God. Unto the obedience of faith, so that all men might believe. Because that is the will of God, that none should perish. That is what he desires, that none should perish, but all should come to repentance, a change of mind, to the acknowledgement of the truth, and to have their sins forgiven, and to be born again. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. That's how I would start this, this out. It's just such a great passage, um, talking about this mystery and to begin with what is the great, what what is this great mystery? It's Jesus Christ paying for the sins of the world, planning it out before the world began for the redemption of of anyone who would believe and this power of God as the gospel you talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that he, the son of God paid for the sins of the world and if anybody would believe they have eternal life you are preaching Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Isn't that something cool? It's cool. It's definitely really cool. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. But this is the first stop on the the train ride through the mystery and all the things that Paul has to say about what was hidden but now can be openly shown. So I think it'll be fun. Um, I don't even know exactly where I'm going to go next. I thought about going to the kingdom and how there are there is a there is a aspect to the kingdom that is secret. Um, maybe I will go to just another one that Paul reveals. I don't know. We'll see. All right. God bless you.